When I went for a walk that day last February, I had no intention on coming back. Thanks for your question, Alex. If you're short on time, here's a too long didn't watch. <laughs> Excessive, uncontrollable amounts of that. If you had to name one of your friends likely to be autistic, who would it be? An innocent question out of curiosity that I never thought to ask my circle in my 43 years of living. I've come to accept that I'm wired different. Most people talk too slow for me and I'm easily distracted. I've always thought I had ADHD. Answering before being picked to answer, talking out of time, interrupting and burping during class with common remarks. My tendency to be easily distracted and my unique experiences led me to reflect on my past. Thinking back on some driving incidents from my past, I realized the extent of my distractibility and impulsiveness. From hitting a mailbox during my first week of driving alone, to navigating busy highways and a car full of friends changing lanes without warning. I've had my fair share of challenges behind the wheel. My struggles with following directions and processing information made me question if there was something more going on besides just being easily distracted. I can walk into the kitchen, make something for lunch, sit down to eat it, forgetting a fork, get up to get the fork, and Nacho, my kid, start asking for food, so I feed him. I noticed the robot vacuum didn't get the floor well, so I grab the broom. As I'm sweeping, the washer stops. The laundry needs to go in the dryer, but the clothes in the dryer need to be folded, so I don't do that, but I do wash the dish I just made lunch in. When I remember I have lunch in the other room, that now needs to be reheated. I return to sit with my lunch, but again, forgetting something to drink, and that's when I remember a fork is what started this whole train wreck. Beyond just the distractions, I've had problems with burping since childhood. I think I was in the third or fourth grade when I was sent to the principal's office for disrupting the class during an uncontrolled, unprovoked burping fit. As an adult, my doctors in the past have prescribed acid blockers and performed endoscopies, colonoscopies, ordering celiac tests, requesting stool samples, seeing nothing unusual, and dismissed it as maybe don't eat those things that trigger it. What triggers it, you ask? Anything or nothing. We did bland foods, one by one, seasonings gradually added back in, and then adding other things in to see what upset my stomach. Despite medical tests and treatments, the issue persisted, and the more doctors insisting it was indigestion, the more I felt my sense of being different, from always being ignored and being misunderstood when I take extra steps using more words than most, and it still happened. Feeling like a burden to others and struggling to find answers led me to keep digging deeper. <laughs> Experiencing meltdowns and shutdowns coupled with difficulties maintaining friendships and employment fueled my curiosity. I began to question why I thought and acted differently from those around me. That same what the f curiosity awoke in me, the wanting to know everything I could about why I thought the way I did. Why in my 43 years of living it's been so hard for me to keep friendships and employment? Why do I need extra time to complete the same things you do? And these intrusive thoughts, they don't belong to me. They don't feel like mine. I don't know where they come from, and I don't know how to get rid of them. What if this isn't typical, but it's just normal for me? Because for once, I was able to see that I'm not working with the same box of crayons as those around me. My glass isn't half full nor half empty. It's just a solid object holding a liquid undisturbed. When I took a walk that day last February, I didn't plan on coming home. I was tired. I was tired of failing, focusing so intensely for weeks and months, chasing perfection with another song the world needs to hear, another video you just gotta see. If I could just finish it. But my ideas move faster than I can process them. Tired of being the one to reach out first. It became clear that if I didn't, they wouldn't. And for whatever reason, every invitation felt like an afterthought. And the longer I sat with these thoughts that again didn't seem like mine, the less I wanted to finish out this timeline. I felt like a burden to the people around me. My texts being unanswered and my calls ignored at a moment when I needed someone. It led me to stop depending on others to be in here for my words. And though I've been in therapy in the past, I forget what I learned some days when the clouds just extend too far for me to see the sun again. I never learned how to swim. And even if I did, 20 degrees in the icy Hudson, naked, that wouldn't have been easy. Do you know what time it is? Snapping me out of what would have been my final thoughts, I answered, 423. Thanks. I'm looking everywhere for this woman. I don't see her, but there's a dog with a service vest walking along this path. I made a promise when I got married, and this isn't my end. Knowing that it would break my heart repeatedly if the shoe were on the other foot. If it was the same thing eating away at my father, there's no escaping this. Again, this isn't where I end. If I can learn the why, I can figure out how to adapt. Dig deeper. While looking online for assessments, I stumbled upon a video, ADHD or autism, which led me down a rabbit hole of online assessments. 
Even though I was skeptical because of my own ignorance of autism at the time, the results resonated with me, prompting me to seek professional guidance. I asked my doctor for a referral to a psychologist who gave me a list of neurologists to contact. Most on that list didn't see adults for assessments, leaving me with little options. And the one I went with was a story for you to watch when you finish watching here. But sit still, I'm not done yet. Reflecting on my friendships, I realized many were superficial or fleeting, commemorative or dormant, with few active connections. Understanding the type of friendships and my role in them helped me recognize patterns in my social interactions. This realization prompted me to delve deeper into online assessments and introspection. The more I lingered on what seemed like the same friendship question worded differently reappearing on the assessments, I couldn't help but to reflect and replay certain final conversations and wonder what could I have said differently, and even worse, agonizing over what's the version of the story they tell people while we no longer speak. I shouldn't care, but... Simple tasks like roll call or attending graduations became anxiety-inducing experiences, highlighting my struggles with social interactions and sensory overload. I was on jury duty the other day, and it made me realize that something about anticipating my name being called, wondering will my voice crack, will it be too loud or too soft, will I have brain fart and pause before responding, or will I think some other name sounds like mine, will I jump on top of it oh, pause, bro. and answer too fast, are the other potential jurors judging the tone of my voice? All of these things over a list of names. There's only one answer, one short word and it terrifies me in the moment. Here, I felt the same with my high school and college graduations. Wondering if I'm walking too fast or too slow. Did I smile for the photo in a normal, less menacing way? I didn't, and my walk was rather stiff. My journey of self-awareness and observation led me to question why traditional work didn't fit me and why I struggled to maintain employment without getting burnt out. This journey of self-discovery has been both challenging and enlightening. As I continue this path, I hope to gain a better understanding of myself and find ways to navigate life more effectively. I've been masking all my life in the ADHD, bipolar, noise sensitivity, and delayed response and trouble processing has been there the whole time. It wasn't until throwing acid blockers and testing my diet to no solution that I figured the friend likely to be autistic it was me. I checked more boxes than I realized. But the funny thing about humans, we can detect when someone's like us and we can sense when they aren't. But I'm not the only one of my friends that's autistic. I'm just the first one to be diagnosed. If you feel like it, subscribe and hit the thumbs up or down, depending on how you feel today. Either one helps me reach others like you, and it's free. The sub even comes with fries. Look at the corner, it's right there.